Hey everyone, welcome back. So, before we start, I do want you guys to take a second to take a look at the rules that we have for this tutorial and also take a second to take a look at the requirements on your side in order for you to be able to follow this tutorial, okay? Now, what we're going to do now is to uh, start or create our new, our new project. And I'm just going to hear, click here on my IntelliJ and say create new project. Now, if you are on IntelliJ, IntelliJ, I'm sorry, not IntelliJ, if you are on SDS or Eclipse, then all you need to do is to go to Spring Initializer, right? Spring Initializer is basically doing the same thing as going to this website right here and creating your project and then importing it on your IDE, all right? This is not a course on IDE or IDE specific, so if you guys have the experience that I recommend you guys should have, then you shouldn't have a problem following along while I use IntelliJ, all right? Remember, and I said this before, we are using Java 8. Java 8, all right? I want to stress this because this shouldn't be a concern. Now, how how would you know what environment you have on your computer? I'm sorry, what version of Java you have on your computer? Well, you need to just type Java dash version. And again, this is very, very basic stuff, right? And what you want to see is that you have Java 8 running here. If you want to have, let's say you want to learn new features in Java 9, 10, or 11, and then you don't want to just uninstall those versions to go back to Java 8 to follow this, then what I recommend is SDK Man. SDK Man allows you to shuffle from one version of Java to another. And if I go here to my SDK list Java, as you can see, I have installed Java 8 and Java 11. And I can also always go to, uh, I believe it's SDK use use Java and then I can just switch back to this version here of Java 11 which I'm already toying with and then if I do again Java version then now you see that I'm on Java 11 but again I am going to be using you guys need to be using Java 8 for now because very specifically with Java 9 uh, there are some issues with Spring Boot 2.0 and Java 9 at least at, the, at this very very time in history so this is why uh, just Keep it nice and simple and use uh, Java 8. And again, SDK Man, uh, just do a quick Google search. I, I believe it's sdkman.io. And actually, why don't I just search that for you right now, guys? Just so that nobody's left, left behind. And yeah, it's actually sdkman.io. And all I recommend for you guys is come to this website, read on, and then install it and use it. It's extremely easy to use, extremely easy to install. It shouldn't be a problem for anyone who has the level that I'm recommending for this video course. All right? So with that out of the way, let's keep creating our little project. I'm going to give it the Agile Intelligence Group. And I'm going to call this Project Board. And then this is going to be project board. All right. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the following. I'm going to bring the dev tools. What we're going to be using the dev tools for mo mo mostly is actually for us to be able, able to access the H2 database console without having to do any configuration, right? Then we're also going to bring the web dependency. And then last but not least, we're going to bring JPA. I'm going to bring H2, and you know what, just to be a good sport, I'm going to be bringing MySQL for those of you that might want to uh, go to MySQL database, although we're not doing this in this series, we are, we're only sticking to H2 database in this series, alright, but I'm going to bring it here just so you guys, some of you guys that want to perhaps just do it that way and persist the data a little more, uh, use that one, remember H2, every time you restart the server, it will clear out all of your data. It's not gonna persist beyond the server being running. So just keep that in mind, all right? Then I'm gonna come here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create this uh, project on my desktop, desktop, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and click Finish, and my project is gonna be creating. Cool. All right, so now my project is up and running, and I'm just gonna bring it here. Here it is. And I'm just going to, for those of you using IntelliJ, I always like doing enabling auto import, although I, I don't think we're going to be bringing any more uh, dependencies here, right? So just do that. And before we even start coding, I do want to recommend the following. Now, this is the, the folder of the project that we just created. 
what I'm going to do is, I cre is create a new folder and I'm going to call it, um, as, let's say, project board course. All right. I'm just going to do that here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that project board here because I want to have both my Spring Re my Spring Boot application and my React React application in this same folder. Because what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a branch that corresponds to each of the lectures. And that way, if you guys run into problems, all you guys need to do then is go to the branch for that specific lecture, check the code, compare against mine, and then if you have any problems, that will be a good way for you guys to support yourself other than uh, perhaps doing some uh, reading on uh, Stack Overflow or Google itself, all right? That way you guys at least have my code and you can compare against it, all right? Perfect. So now let's move forward and let's uh, implement everything that we need to implement in this lecture because we actually do have quite a bit of work to do here, all right? So as I mentioned before, and by the way, this already died on me because uh, I changed the I changed the directory for this. So I'm just going to go and browse this real quick and then reopen the project on my IntelliJ, okay? Just give me one minute. Should be a minute. All right, board course. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do, guys. I'm so sorry. Give me just one more moment. I know that you guys just want to get coding. Now, hear me spin my my wheels here, All right? Cool. All right, so there we are. We're back in business. Enable auto import, and all is well. Cool. So now here in the source folder, you guys obviously have. Um, the main package and you obviously have the application if you guys brought all the if you guys brought all the dependencies that I recommended you should be able to just run this right now and it should run no problem and then if you guys go to localhost 8080 and I'm just gonna show you right now if you guys go to localhost 8080 then you should get this white level error page all right if you're here if you see this it's all good and again you guys have some experience with this so I'm pretty sure you know this by now all right so I'm just gonna close out of that and then the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create our project task object okay our project task object is the first thing that we're gonna work on all right and just if you just give me a minute I'm just gonna show you what you need to do here in the main package you're gonna create a package called domain all right in the domain package you're gonna create a class and this class is gonna be called project task and you're gonna give it a few minutes and then it's gonna obviously create that project task now in this project task we're gonna not only define the attributes but also we're gonna define this specific Java class as an entity so that we can create this table in our database so we're gonna say entity add entity and then we're going to start defining some of the attributes. The first mandatory attribute that we need to define here is the ID. All right. And then obviously we, have, we also have to uh, set this up as a generated value with a strategy of generation type identity. Perfect. And again, this is going to be a private long. OK, the wrapper, not the primitive. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say wrapper or primitive, this course is already too advanced for you, right? This is not a basics in Java. Okay, then the other attributes that we're gonna put here is gonna be private string summary, then private string acceptance criteria, and then last but not least, we're gonna say private string status. All right, very important. This is what we're gonna set up here. Then we're gonna set a no arguments constructor here, and then we're gonna set up our getters and setters. Now, I do wanna throw a challenge at you because I mean, it is the end of 2018, and doing things this way, come on, like <laughs> we're far, we're way past this, but I'm just doing it for those folks that are a little more uh, on the basic side. But if you're more in the advanced side, then I do want you guys to take a look at Project Lombok and actually refactor this using project Lombok. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there for you guys to do, but for now, this is the object that we're gonna be creating. Now that we have this in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart our server. I'm just gonna restart my server here. 
and then I'm going to see the console and I'm pretty sure that we're not going to have any problems. Now, um, a lot of my students in my other course uh, that were still trying to use Java 9, Java 9, they had an error when they were trying to do this thing with Java 9 and then they some of them told me that when they removed the entity annotation then everything went away but it, it, of, it of course did not create the table for them so if you're still use hellbent or using Java 9 there's a good good chance that this is not gonna work alright so just take my word for it go to Java 8 remember it is better and this 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 actually stands true in the in the enterprise in big companies people just unless they have a really good reason for it Companies stay with the long-term support versions. Java 8 is a long-term support version. Java 9 is not a uh, long-term support version. In, in fact, it was out of support by March 2018. Java 10 is not a long-term support version. It was supported until September this year, 2018. All right, so you might as well just keep working on Java 8 and then just wait. Uh, until Java 11 is flagged as LTS, which I believe it's gonna be. To be honest, I'm a little beh behind on that reading, but I think that the jury's still out on that. Again, forgive me if I'm if I'm giving you wrong information. All I know is that uh, there's a very good chance that Java 11 is gonna be the next set LTS support. All right. So again, guys, this is why we brought uh, the Dev Developer Tools. We want to go to localhost 8080 h2-console. Click here. This is gonna bring you to this page here all you want to do is click connect and then you're gonna click here this is gonna create the query for you I'm just gonna delete this because I don't want to confuse you give me a second I'm just gonna delete this to show you that if you click the table it generates a query for you you click run and then as you can see we have our our um, table definition here and this is really really good all right guys so now moving on what we're going to do is start creating some of the, say, bare bones of the things that we need in order for us to uh, create our little API, all right? Now, following conventions, I'm going to create three three packages. I'm going to create the first package is going to be the repository, right? The next package is going to be services or service. And the fourth package is going to be web. And this is where we're going to have our controllers. Cool. All right. So now let's let's start creating some some of the variables here before we call this like lecture a wrap. Right here, we're gonna call the project. We're gonna call this project task repository. Right. And I shouldn't have created this as a ta as a class because this is actually an interface. We're going to annotate this as at repository, and then we're gonna extend the CRUD repository. We're going to pass it the project task object here. And then we're going to also indicate that the ID is of type long. Perfect. Now, the next thing we're going to create here is our service. And we're going to call it project task service. Now, what the project task, task service is going to do for us in this class is that we do have a little bit of log logic, or we're going to have a fair bit of logic that we don't, that we are not going to have in the repository interface for obvious reasons, and also we're going to. It's a fair bit of logic that we don't necessarily want in our controller. Remember, our controller should be always a routing mechanism. Please refrain as much as you can, obviously, from having a lot of logic in your controller. Okay, that's always a no-no. So just keep that in mind, right? Then we're going to annotate this as a service, and then we're going to auto wire. We're going to auto wire our repository here because, in the end, the service is going to be, say, the middleman between the repository and the controller, right? Project task repository, repository, perfect. And this is where we're going to leave things for now in this specific file. Then we're going to go to the web, and we're going to create a new Java class, and we're going to call this one project task controller okay we're going to annotate this as rest controller and then we're gonna use the at request mapping and the mapping that we're gonna set up here is gonna be API slash board all right then last but not least I'm gonna use this cross origin annotation here because even though we don't don't have spring security in place and we're not gonna do it in this project uh, we do need to enable this API to be 
accessed by another say service right in this case it's going to be our react app reaching out to our spring boot app and without this then we're going to get a 403 error so we need this annotation there are other ways to configure this globally for the app but for this use case and for for other use cases let's just keep this nice and simple because all we're taking here is a additional annotation and this is sweet that way we don't have to write that much code now here what we need to do is we need to auto wire our project task service perfect all right so with this in place we're, i'm just going to rerun my server just to make sure that everything is fine and we don't have anything breaking anywhere because sometimes things can break just because you you forgot an annotation so right now things are looking nice and neat and this is where we're going to leave things for now in the next one then we're going to start wiring up our first crowd operation which is going to be for us to be able to create project tasks thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one